Today's retro remix is about the 1999 film Free Enterprise. This was one of my earlier attempts at shooting a review video, so there are still a lot of technical issues involved with this. I still quite hadn't figured out how to sync up audio at that point, so it's a little rough at that point. Obviously, I've gotten much better since then, but, you know, if there's ever a need for me to go back and have to re-edit it again and try to sync up the sounds in the more rough areas, I might. But I think it does look better in terms of pacing and overall imagery. In any case, here's the original piece. Free Enterprise stars Eric McCormick as Mark Altman, Rafer Weigel as Robert Meyer Burnett, Audie England as Claire, and William Shatner as Bill. I've been a big fan since his days as Captain Kirk on Star Trek, and I followed up that fandom from everything from Denny Crane to Priceline ads to his turn as Two-Face in Batman vs. Two-Face. Free Enterprise was set in late 1990s Los Angeles, and has surprisingly had a lot of personal connections in my life, from its characters to its settings. The film focuses on Mark and Robert. Mark is trying to pitch his latest film, Brady Killer, a film that combines 1990s irony with the nostalgia of the 70s. While Mark is struggling to find someone to greenlight Brady Killer, Robert has his own struggles. Robert is by far the less responsible of the two, spending most of his time either chasing women or chasing action figures, or spending nights out with his friend Sean at nightclubs. By sheer coincidence, Robert and Mark run into William Shatner at a local bookstore. The meeting doesn't go too well initially, with Shatner understandably being wary of these two starstruck fans. But after Robert and Mark announce that they're in the industry, Shatner's tone changes because he has his own idea that he wants to pitch. Shatner's idea is unusual. His big idea is William Shakespeare's and William Shatner's Julius Caesar, with himself playing all the parts. Of course, except for Calpurnia, which uh, he thinks uh, either Sharon Stone or Heather Locklear could play that part. Understandably, it's now Mark and Robert's turn to be wary, having gone from meeting their childhood idol to finding someone who's not quite what they expected. Shatner is eccentric, not as lucky in love with the ladies as his Kirk persona, and with this idea that he can do an entire musical play with himself playing all the major parts in Julius Caesar. He's a very different turn of what you would expect from Shatner playing himself. That was one of the big provisions about this film. When this film was originally presented to Shatner, he didn't want to be as an all-knowing, all-seeing god who was perfect and dispensed perfect advice. That idea didn't really appeal to him. However, when the writers decided to change him into a little bit more human, a little bit more fallible, he became interested enough in the idea to join up with the rest of the cast. And Shatner's performance of Just Simply Bill is definitely one to enjoy and is one of the true highlights of the film. He's eccentric, you never quite know where he'll appear next, and he always has a brand new idea about his musical version of Julius Caesar. While all of this is going on, Robert meets a young girl by the name of Claire, who is also as big of a fanboy as the rest of the group. After their initial meeting, Claire scribbles down her phone number on a copy of Uncanny X-Men 266, which for those of you who don't know is the first appearance of Gambit in the X-Men series. This sets in motion a weeks-long romance between Claire and Robert, Robert again continuing to neglect his personal duties such as utilities, paying bills, even showing up at his job, and ultimately this leads to a lot of issues for him. Mark, who habitually bails him out of every predicament, finally has enough of Robert and they get into an argument. This only lasts so long, however, as Mark does care about his irresponsible best friend and does want to check up on him. However, Mark has his own issues. In a few weeks, he's turning 30 and that palm light a la Logan's run is starting to blink. He's starting to feel his own sense of mortality and wanting to see if there's someone out there for him or is he just destined to be sarcastic. -y. Eventually, things do turn out. The group finds out that while you can be a giant Toys or us kid at heart, you do have to accept some personal responsibility and have some growth along the way in order to be a fully functioning adult. And they find their own way in time. Even Mark finds love at his 30th birthday party, and Shatner surprises the group by debuting his first single, No Tears for Caesar, with rap accompaniment by the rated R. Free Enterprise is a fun movie. While there are a lot of references to geekdom, there are at times jokes that seem to be stretched a little too far with obvious geek references tacked onto them. They do, however, know their geek credit so a lot of it is forgivable. The film can best be described as swingers meets clerks, with a lot of that 90s cool meets pop culture geekdom. And overall, it works really well. You like the characters, even when they are being sarcastic, cynical, and even a little selfish at times. The one-liners are excellent, and of course, one of the main highlights of the film is Shatner himself. He plays Bill as vulnerable, eccentric, completely 
odd. He's just an interesting, interesting character that has his own ideas, and no matter how weird they are, he believes he can do them. When Free Enterprise debuted in Los Angeles, it only debuted on nine theaters back in 1998. It didn't have a very large run, although it did find an audience on DVD when it was released in 1999. Free Enterprise also personally resonated throughout my life over the years. Due to the numerous pop culture references, it enticed me to go check out some of the films that they were referencing, such as Logan's Run and Manhattan. And while Mark never got to write that Brady killer film, he did write a film called All Souls Day. It starred Danny Trejo and premiered to a wide audience on the Sci-Fi Channel. So All Souls Day was one of my first acting opportunities in Los Angeles and also gave me a chance to eat lots of people over the following weeks. Thanks, Mark. If you're a fan of witty one-liners, film references, miss the 1990s, or just love William Shatner, this is a great film to definitely watch. It's a fun little indie film and one of my personal favorites.